Hey everyone and welcome back to No Bobiz TV. It's so great to be back here again for our Founder Friday feature. We've got an exciting show for you guys today. Uh, but just before we jump into the show, I want to give another shout out to uh, our winner of the GoPro Hero 5 session camera, Brad James. Congratulations, man. Uh, Brad actually was able to come by last night. Uh, and hang out in the studio while we did the the turnover of the camera. So we gave that to him and uh, we filmed it. Uh, so we've got this quick little clip uh, for you to check it out and uh, you guys can see Brad uh, getting his brand new GoPro Hero 5 session. So check this out. Hey guys, welcome to No Bull Biz TV. I've got the one and only Brad James in the studio, winner of the GoPro Hero 5 session. It's cool because he's from Calgary. Super exciting, yes. It's actually funny because I know Brad and uh, I've only known Brad for about a year. About a year, year now. And uh, when I pulled the name and it said Brad James, I know him as Brad Allen. So the first thing I did was like, I don't know a Brad James. Like, what the flip's going on? So I'm like, I'm on Facebook. I'm like checking it all out. So I sent him a message and I'm like, hey, Brad, are you Brad James too? And he's like, yeah, I'm Brad James too. <laughs> so that was cool, man. So how do you feel about uh, winning the GoPro? I'm super pumped. Are you pumped? I'm very excited to use it, yeah. Cool, man. Well, we were gonna order one online, uh, which was gonna take some time, because these things are sold out, guys. They're really high on demand. We could only really get our hands on the Hero 4 session, which is not 4K. But we got lucky, thanks to our good friends at Sporting Life, we were able to get the, uh, the Hero 5 session. So. I'm gonna pull this out and do the official handoff to uh, Mr. Brad James. There you go, man, Hero 5 awesome. session. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Appreciate it. So one caveat, you have to film something really cool yeah. and let us show it as long as it's legal. It's gotta be legal. Not a problem. Okay. <laughs> Not a problem. So there you go, man. So uh, Brad, you got the, uh, the Hero 5. Awesome, thank you. I'm excited. Thank you so much. No problem. Our pleasure and uh, can't wait to see uh, what you film. For sure. All right, guys. Brad James, Brad James everybody. So that's pretty cool, Brad seems pretty excited to get his new camera and uh, as you saw in the video, he's committed to giving us something cool. He's gonna film it and get us the footage so we can feature it here hopefully uh, in the next week or so in one of our upcoming uh, features. So uh, before we jump into our feature for Founder Friday today, uh, we do have a book a referral today that I'm gonna give you guys and this one is called On Mental toughness. Uh, I picked this one up actually uh, in the airport in Phoenix uh, while I was in between travels uh, a few weeks back and uh, this is an awesome, awesome read. It's a short read. It's only how many pages? Uh, but 130 pages. So awesome read and uh, as you know in business if you're going to have success you got to be tough right here. You got to have a tough mindset and you got to have tough, tough mental toughness. You got to be tough in the head, really tough in the mind. So uh, that's an awesome, awesome read and uh, pick it up. Uh, it was actually put out by Harvard Business School. Uh, uh, sorry, based out of the, uh, the Harvard Business Review. So uh, definitely uh, pick this up. You can find it in all your major bookstores or if you Google it, I'm sure you can grab it on Amazon as well. So mental toughness, good stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shift right into our founder feature and this is a special one for me uh, because it's actually on one of my best friends, Melvin Astoria. He is the co-founder and vice president of a company in Phoenix, Arizona uh, called Sonoran Stabilization. So Melvin's gonna give you a bit of an intro uh, in terms of what they do with that company. But it's been so exciting for me because I've known Melvin for about seven, eight years and uh, we met through another business project that we were working on together and uh, we've just formed this real brotherhood. We've become really, really close friends and um, you know what they say, you, you meet, uh, you, you really see who your best friends are when you go through a really, really tough time in life, right? You look around, you really see, I mean, when, when everything's going great, everything's on the up and up, you know, everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody wants to hang out, you know, and take advantage of, of your success. But when you come crashing down and you go through a really, really tough time in life, look around, right? Pay attention to who's actually hanging out with you and, uh, and see who your real friends are. And I can tell you one thing right now, um, he is my American brother. Actually, I'm, I'm just gonna throw this on because this is representing the love 
the love for uh, for the uh, American brother down south in Phoenix, but Melvin has been an absolute true loyal friend. He's always had my back, especially with what I've gone through uh, with losing my company a few years ago. And uh, he's just got such a great business story, and he's done it the old school way, guys, which is do the work, work hard, and eventually you'll get to where you want to go. So. Uh, without further ado, we're going to jump right into the feature. Uh, we were able to do it uh, through a Zoom. Like I said, I really wanted to be in Phoenix uh, to do it with him, but we just couldn't make that happen. So we, we had to do it through a Zoom call, but it was awesome. It turned out great, and I think you guys are going to really, really enjoy it. So make sure you guys got your pens, you got your notepads. Uh, Melvin shares some really, really great stuff that I know you can take away and apply it to your business life. So here we go. Let's get into the feature and enjoy it. All right, guys, welcome to Noble Biz uh, TV. Uh, this is an exciting day uh, for me because I've got my buddy here, Melvin Estorga from Phoenix, Arizona, the AZ, baby. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing great. I, the only thing is I wish I was in the AZ doing this with you. But unfortunately, because of what's going on, we're so busy up here that I've got to do a Zoom with you to make this finally happen because I've been wanting – you to tell your your business entrepreneur crazy story. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So, anyways, we got to do it this way. No big deal. Look at it, man. I got the Coyotes jersey. I love it. Got the Cardinals hat. Yep. The Cardinals jersey is out in the game room. But yeah, so I'm here in my office in, uh, in Calgary, Phoenix. Uh, uh, Melvin is down in Phoenix, Arizona. How hot is it there today? It's pool weather right now, man. It's pool weather. It's pool? It's pool weather. Is it drop the top weather? Absolutely. At night, it's absolutely drop the top weather. Amy always, Amy, Amy had this rule that she would, she would put her top down as long as it was a hundred or less. Yeah. It dropped it down about a hundred. Uh, not happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You need some of that AC out here during the day for totally. sure. So it's for still sure. over a hundred right now. Uh, yeah. During the day at night, it dropped down nineties. I love the heat, man. As a Canadian, you'll never hear me complain about the heat, ever. <laughs> so I got to put on my uh, Americano uh, hat yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. I love so, it. Uh, American love for my brother. I my love brother, it. Another mother. Yep. So uh, anyways, you know what? Just to kind of do a, a quick introduction in terms of how uh, Melvin and I met uh, before we get into a little Q&A. Uh, Melvin's, Melvin's been uh, a, a true brother to me. And uh, what I mean by that is, you know, you've heard that saying that um, if you really want to know who your real friends are, wait till everything kind of goes south, your world completely crashes and look around and see who's still interested on in being a friend. Right. And Melvin, you've, you've always been there. You've always, you've always been a true bro. And obviously you watched me at, you know, the height of, of my, of my business success. And then you watched me come crashing down. And you were still still there to be my bro, so that means means the world to me, man. Absolutely, you know Jim Rome says, and I, I know you know this. He says uh, your friends are those that uh, know everything about you and still like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you still like me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. You're all right. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, actually. Melvin and I used to be in a in a direct sales company together. This is this is going back quite a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, one of the things that we did is, uh, every quarter, uh, we had a big conference where all the leaders and, and, you know, a lot of the people in the company would get together. We would meet somewhere in the U S and have this big convention. And there was what, probably 15, 20,000 people there. Yep. Huge, huge event. And, uh, one of the things that we would do is we would have uh, a service on Sunday for people who, you know, have faith and, or looking for faith or whatever. And so we did like a full out church service, which is pretty cool. And I play keyboard and we had a worship band. And so I, I got an opportunity to, to join the worship band. And then, and then Melvin was also invited to play keys. So he was a keyboard player. I was a keyboard player. And at first, actually, I was a little like, why are we going to have two keyboard players? This is kind of dumb, right? So, <laughs> but it was so cool because Melvin plays a little bit more of like a rhythm role. And I'm, I'm more of a fill kind of like, you know, strings and stuff like that. So it was, it was really cool, but that's actually how we met. Yeah, it was on stage, on stage, like that's <laughs> back, what, 2011 or something like that. 2010. That's yeah. Yeah. A yeah. Yeah. Long time ago, man. Yeah. So, at least a good 70 years. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's been a good ride though. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. So, well, that's kind of how we met and uh, our families have gotten close. As a matter of fact, I'm in the middle of, uh, of, of a startup right now uh, with a, uh, a new software that's going into the United States this year, which is really exciting and, and I spent a lot of time with Melvin earlier this year while I was down in Phoenix yeah. and uh, crashed at his house and slept in the, the boat bed. The yeah, boat so bed. Boat yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of fun. So, so anyways, uh, Melvin, I know your story and you've got a very humble story and you've worked extremely hard to get to where you are today. And uh, that to me is really what success is all about. There's not a lot of people out there that are willing to go out and pay the price um, to get to that, to that level eventually where you actually start to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Right. And Absolutely. so it's, it's really cool. I remember I, I'm getting goosebumps right now because I remember standing in the kitchen of our place in Scottsdale uh, earlier this spring and you were there and you were talking about, you know, how everything had finally come together for you. And, and I just turned to you and I'm like, bro, like you're a millionaire now. Think about that. <laughs> you're, you're a millionaire. You're a multimillionaire. That's, that's exciting, Melvin. It's That's pretty crazy, huh? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Pulls up in his Range Rover and yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, man, you're rolling now. <laughs> I thought you were going to join the Porsche club. I'm a little bummed that you went Range Rover over Porsche, but the Range Rover suits you, bro. You know what? Uh, Rose and my wife, uh, big supporter in, 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 in our success, uh, she wants to join that club. You know, she's, she's, uh, she likes that Cayenne, I tell you that much. She does, eh? She, like, she likes the Cayenne, but, uh, you know, we can talk cars all day long, me and you. I know. And, uh, I know we can. I and know. I bet a lot of entrepreneurs is, uh, uh, is something they look forward to, you know, their dream car. But, you know, you were talking about a Range Rover, and that was something that I had dreamed back, back, in, way back when we met, you know. Uh, one day I want a Range Rover, you know. Wow. I, it was one of my dream cars. Um, my dreams have expanded and there's a lot more cars in my dream now. <laughs> so we'll, we'll hopefully, uh, you know, add to the fleet a little bit later on. That's exciting, man. Well, we'll, we'll put a shot up on the screen right now of, of Melvin's Range Rover. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a beauty. He's got the, the blocked out wheels and uh, there's actually one in my neighborhood here in Calgary. And every time it goes by now, I'm like, Oh, Melvin's here. <laughs> Let's go ski. Let's go ski. <laughs> Let's go ski. <laughs> love it. I so, love it. Cool, man. Okay. Well, what we'll do just because of, you know, your time and, and, and the time of the recording, uh, yep. we're going to get right into some, uh, some Q and A so you guys can hear Melvin's story. And, uh, so what we're going to do is the first, the first question, Melvin. So Melvin's actually in a, he's the vice president and co-founder of a company called Sonoran Stabilization. And uh, maybe we can just start off by, by just giving everybody kind of a quick 35,000 foot view of what is Sonoran Stabilization? What do you guys do? Well, actually, we started in the erosion control industry as far as I'm a contractor in construction industry. So we started in a uh, what it is erosion control and it kind of uh, flourished from there and went to a lot of uh, areas in the construction field. And what I do now is I'll do anything. <laughs> I tell as long, people as long as there's money in it. <laughs> you know what? Who am I to who am I who am I to say no to your money? Right. So, yeah. I, you know, if, if, if you cut the check. I always tell my team, you know, let's get the job and we'll figure out how to do it later. I think that's a, a big key for entrepreneurship. I think a lot of people think they need to, they need to have everything figured out to get started. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you'll never get started. You'll never figure everything out when you get started. So when we got started, we started as an erosion control company. Um, and what we really mainly did was sweep sidewalks and clean streets from after rainwater here in Arizona. So we're not used to having a lot of rain, but when it does rain during monsoon seasons, you'll have a lot of erosion uh, on some home building sites. And a lot of that sediment falls into the gutters and streets and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And so what we started, me and my partner started in uh, 2010 was uh, down during the economy, you know, bust was we, we started sweeping streets. We uh, cleaned gutters and uh, washed the streets and, and did anything anybody wanted us to do. I like to call us like uh, we're the butlers of the industry, you know, the last 5 10% that uh, you need to make your job site look good. Or call That's me, cool. we'll take care of that for you. Wow. <laughs> so That's what we started and, and involved to uh, big multi-million dollar projects. Now we're, we're uh, uh, creating big erosion control measures for, um, you know, uh, the county now, the city. You now we're doing a lot of stuff all over, all over the place here in Arizona. And who, who was doing the work back then, Melvin? 
It was me, actually. Me and my partner started. We started in, in, uh, in the gutters. Literally, when you, people say we started in the gutters. We were literally sweeping gutters. Wow. <laughs> That's the funny thing about it is, and as we, as we started to grow, we started to, to uh, you know, add people. But that was one thing we didn't, we didn't do right away was add a lot of people to it. You know, we wanted to uh, stay involved as much as we could until we needed the extra help. And then when we needed the help, we went out and got the help, you know. Uh, we weren't scared to pull the trigger, but we were very, uh, you know, wanted to be very smart, you know, after the economy bust. We didn't want to, you know, outgrow the company and, and, and um, workforce and not have the, the work to supply uh, a family, uh, you know, with the amount of uh, work that you need to keep an employee for, for a whole year. So once we brought somebody in, we said, you know what, if we bring somebody in, we're going to have enough work to keep this person for many, many years, not just for a month or two months to get this job done, but we want to maintain and build a strong foundation for our company. That's what we did. So besides you and your partner, do you remember employee number one? I do. You do? I do remember, I do remember employee number one. Besides me and my partner? Yeah. Yeah, I do I remember employee number one. Actually, it was a church friend, uh, a buddy who, uh, you know, didn't know anything about construction, never worked construction. He uh, worked uh, selling cars. And, um, not no, too many, kidding. Not, yeah, not too many people in 2000. So we started in 2010. He came to work with us in late 2011 and, you know, still the economy wasn't doing as well. So he wasn't selling as many cars. So we brought him in, uh, as a entry level labor. Uh, and it was, and it was such a great time to being able to mentor and teach somebody, uh, the ropes on construction industry because he was one of the faithfulest guys I, I, I know because he didn't know any better, right? He, mm. he learned from, from me who I brought integrity, work ethic, and just always brought my 100% to the, to the job site. And he didn't know that uh, there were shortcuts in the industry. So I taught him the right way and he didn't know any, <laughs> any way to, to work, but the right way. So I still remember his name, Adan. His name is Adan. That's cool, man. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Cool. Employee number one, eh? Employee number one. Yeah, wow. that's cool. And now, and, and, and now fast forward to 2018, we've got uh, 60 employees now, give or 60, take. Yeah, six, yeah, yeah. Zero. six zero. Yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> and approximately how much money uh, in just equipment? Oh, wow. I mean, equipment, we've got multi-million dollars in equipment on our job sites at any time. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, that's, that just comes with the territory, man. It's part of a tool, you know, as an entrepreneur, uh, having the right tool to succeed is, is key. You know, if you don't have the right tools, it, it's hard to get the job done. So with equipment and, uh, and, and what we do, we need to have the right type of equipment, you know? So we, we go out and we get what we need to get the job done. So, uh, yeah. Well, you, you know what, Melvin, you, you really inspired me and motivated me to, um, you know, just coming back this spring to Calgary. Um, cause I was in Phoenix, you know, working on my startup and, you know, laying the foundation, and just by what you said earlier about, you know, hey, man, I'll, I'll, I'll do any work. I mean, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to say no to an opportunity. And I kind of had this mindset going into this year where, nah, you know what, I'm, I'm going this way and I'm kind of at this level. And, you know, if, if projects don't line up that way, then I'm just not going to do it. And it was kind of right. an ignorant attitude. And, and so I, I intentionally ramped down my one company uh, before Christmas so that I would have a lot more time. Uh, to really work on my startup, but that wasn't smart business for me. And so I remember when I came back here late April, beginning of May, I really, I really heard that voice. I, I remember we were driving in your truck that one afternoon and you were on the phone talking about some kind of a grading job or something. And I thought, man, Melvin's doing these multi-million dollar contracts, but then he's doing these other contracts for, you know, a few grand. And yeah. uh, I just, I, I really respect that. And, and I think as an entrepreneur, as, as a business owner, we should never get to a point, you know, mentally where we're too good for something, you know? Absolutely. I just want to piggyback off that. We continue to do work for now that I want to say it's not a great business bottom line for some of the work that we do, but it maintains a relationship with the customer. Relationship. Relationship is the key. We, yes. In 2010, we started, uh, like I said, with integrity, and we did the, we did something. At, I, I should say it this way: we said what we were going to do. If we said I was going to be there at 10 o'clock, one o'clock, 7 a.m., 4 a.m., we were there. 
we had integrity and we continued to work with integrity and we built relationships throughout, throughout the, uh, throughout our business career here. And what, and what we failed to, to realize is that once you screw somebody over, the word is out, mm-hmm. the word is out, you know, and, and it's, and it's, and it's so big in our industry. It's, it's a good old boy industry. It's a construction industry that if you burn one bridge, you better watch out because, uh, you know, you're not going to get m- many opportunities after that. So we've continued to do what we, we started to do in 2010. We'll still street clean sidewalks. We continue to do that every single day. We wash streets. We do the two, $300 projects, you know, that, you know, we'll take a crew out there. It's only a, a $200 billable item. We continue to do that uh, every day for, since we started, but yet mm. incorporated the bigger projects and brought in the, the right people to, to fulfill the needs of these bigger projects, but never steered away from the, from what we started and it and and we have not changed our prices since 2010. How about wow. that? Wow. Since 2010, we have not changed our prices. We've continued to give uh, the same price, the same customer service, the same attention to detail, and we're very proud of what we do out in the field. That's amazing, Melvin. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, it, it's funny, just just kind of closing on that on that point about just going after the business. One of the calls I made uh, was to an old advertising client of mine in Calgary. Uh, uh, early June. And so I cold called them, you know, hadn't talked to them in many, many, many years. I had actually designed their logo originally when I had my, my publishing company and uh, I call them up. Sure enough, there's all kinds of opportunity there. Right? So I prejudged and really at the end of the day, if I hadn't shifted my mindset, I wouldn't have entered into this other relationship, which ended up opening up a bunch of other doors for our company to go in and do some work. And now it's led into all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. So like you said, the relationship, I believe that is key, man. That is key. Cause you never know what one job or, or one door is going to open up, uh, you know, in terms of opportunity in the future. It's huge. I tell you, Jeremy, we'll have a, we'll have a conversation with somebody and maybe we don't have, we don't come into an agreement on a project as far as getting the job done. But I, I could go on and on countless stories how these same people will contact me three, four, five, six years down the road and be like, hey, I need you. And, yeah. you know, because I was and always. they know you'll be there. And they know I'll be there, right? They, they know that I'm going to show up. They know that uh, my reputation is follows, follows me everywhere. And right now we've, we do everything in our power to always uh, do what we say we're going to do. And we always perform, even if it costs us money. Yeah. And here's, here, here's, here's that deciding factor a lot of, where a lot of people bust because they'll, they'll, they'll take that, that project halfway through and, and, and figure out, hey, we're not making money. We're, gonna, we're off the job site. We'll, we'll do what, everything we need to do to complete the job, even if it means us losing money. Because, wow. you know, if, if we lose money one time, I know that that customer is going to be happy. Yes, we didn't make the money we planned on, but I know that's going to be a repeat customer for many, many, many years. And we'll continually uh, give them service and we'll continually make money if we do a long-term relationship with these customers. And, and these people uh, uh, have big pockets. So <laughs> we're going to go after the, uh, the work and, and we're going to continue to do the work for them. Even if we do lose a couple of them, uh, we might lose the battle, but we won't lose the war if you have that customer service wow. attention to detail. That's good, man. That's a good word. I mean, I know Jaybird, you know, Jaybird, the Bluetooth headphones, uh, yeah. they lost me as a customer last year. And I was, I was over the warranty by, by nine days. And, um, you know, they, they just, they, they died. They just, they just wouldn't charge anymore. And they wouldn't ship me a new pair of headphones. And I thought, man, I spent like 200 and some bucks on these things. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know what? So they've lost me as, uh, you know, as, as a customer. Yeah. And, who knows how many other people as well, but you really got to, at the end of the day, you got to think about, you know, I was leaving uh, one of our sites on, uh, on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And you know, the CEO walked up to me and he said, Jeremy, thank you so much for caring about the details of what you're doing. Yep. And I honestly think Melvin, you know what, by going through the tough stuff that you and I have both had to go through, I know me with losing my company a couple of years ago, it's really made me appreciate my customers, right? I love my customers. I'm rebuilding my life. I'm rebuilding my company. Right. And so every project is a new opportunity to grow, right? Absolutely. And, and I'm so thankful. I've got so much gratitude. And, and, and I know, I know that you, you look at your, your, you know, your opportunities and your clients exactly the same. So that's We awesome. make it right. You make it right. You know, just make it right. And, and, and we, we lead with a lot of our heart. You know, if your heart tells you that ah, this, is, this is not right, we do everything yeah. we can to make it right. We make it right. 
Awesome, man. Awesome. Okay. So basically when you got started in construction, how old were you? I was 18 years old. Well, let's take it back a little bit. Let's, okay. let's talk to what were how I was really introduced to construction. Well, you know, my mom was an immigrant from Mexico. My dad's third generation uh, Mexican American. Uh, from my dad's side, we were always in the agriculture industry. My great grandfather, my my uh, my grandfather, were uh, cotton pickers, <laughs> strawberry pickers, grape pickers. So we're always in the field. My mom's uh, she's an immigrant from Mexico, so. Uh, we brought that construction, uh, you know, farming type of industry or in, in our heritage, in our, in our blood. So as a young age, I, uh, I got into that. That's all I knew. That's mm -hmm. all I knew how to do was construction. So I, I, I was involved with it all the time. So um, at 18, when I got married straight out of high school with Rosa, uh, the only thing I knew how to do was work a, a shovel at that point, you know? Uh, so I got started at $7 and 50 cents an hour. Still, I still have my uh, first few paycheck stubs that keep, that keeps wow. me grounded. I still have those. I pulled them out. I don't know, three months ago, two, three months ago. And I showed Rose, I showed her these check stubs where I made, you know, 300 bucks in a week. You know, that's a full week's work for 300 bucks, hard mm -hmm. labor work. And, and, and it keeps me grounded. It reminds me of, of where I come from, but it continues to strive forward, you know? Mm. And that was at 18. I started at seven bucks, uh, seven fifteen an hour and just was introduced to the opportunity to, uh, to work. That was it. You know, I was having lunch with uh, one of my lead guys uh, just not too long ago today. And I told him, you know, everybody wants to know the secret to success and, and it's just work. That's it. Just do just the work. work. Just do the work. Just, yeah. just get your head down and work. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's, I think is, is, where a lot of people are lacking, you know, and, and yeah. especially in entrepreneurship, they want to know that what's the key, what's not a key, it's a combination. It's a combination of things, right? It's not one key fits all. It's a combination of what makes you motivated, what, what type of work ethic do you have? And it's a combination of your integrity. It's a combination of so many things that come mm -hmm. together that makes you, makes you successful. And to me, one of my thing was, is I have an addictive personality, 100%. So to me, working wasn't a burden. It was, it was very addictive to work. I wanted to work. I wanted to succeed. I wanted to do great things. I wanted to move. I wanted to grow. And I wanted to do all these things that, bear, uh, that came down to one, I mean, foundational principle was hard work. That's what it, that's what it took. And, uh, and that's where I started at age 18, seven bucks an hour, seven fifteen an hour. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was doing that's underground. I was doing water and sewer in trenches. So that's what it was. Uh, so I did uh, utilities. So it, it was all sewer and water for, uh, for new home sites. So working in the ground, 20, 30 feet in the ground in trenches. And that's where I started, in the trench. It's amazing that most of our mentors, and I know you, you and I have similar mentors as well, but a lot of our mentors always talk about specifically being grounded and staying humble. Yep. And I think you pulling out those check stubs, I know me going back to where I was raised is really, really important to me. And, um, you know, looking at, looking at that $300 check, it must just motivate the hell out of you. You must get just jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I have dinner for 300 bucks sometimes. <laughs> right? It's, yeah. But it's, it's humbling. But, that, you but know? that didn't just happen. You know, you were willing to do the work and – you have to have this mindset that there is no finish line. You just got to do the work. And then yeah. eventually your dreams, your goals, your targets, it all catches up to you. Absolutely. You, you know, know, you put your head down, you work. And then one day you look up and, and, and you tell yourself, holy cow, where am I at? You know, I, I, don't I even recognize I'm, your life. You don't recognize because all you've been doing is putting in the work, putting in the oh. work. That's all it takes. It's beautiful. You know, Amy and I love celebrating and watching you guys because it's just, it, it's just so exciting. We both know what it's like to pay the price. So, okay. So what was it like? You already covered that kind of, you know, the first three to five years, but what did, um, I guess, what was the biggest painful sacrifice that you made to keep the business moving forward? Wow. So many sacrifices. Um, there's, there's so many to, to, we can go over the, 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 you know, the late nights, the, you know, so sick, but 
I had to get up anyways and go to work because at this point, you know, we only had one or two employees and I, you can't call in sick when there's only three of you, you know, right? Or even two of you, if one calls in six, 50% of your workforce just is, is on sick leave, right? Or sick yeah. leave. <laughs> yeah. So, but there's one story in particular that um, I don't even think I, I, I shared with you, Jeremy, and I'll share with you right now. Okay. We're working in Tucson, Arizona. That's about, you know, two and a half, three hours uh, from Phoenix, uh, south towards the border. We're working on this project. Let me fix this camera here. Working on this project. It was Saturday, and uh, that was my son's fifth birthday. Uh, and we had a party planned at at the house. And my 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 thought was, you know, I'll. We were there the whole week. I was there from from Monday. I'm there Saturday. Still haven't been home in a week, and I know that I got to get this job done on Saturday because I got to get home for my son's birthday party. His mm-hmm. fifth birthday party. Uh, to say at least, the job didn't get done for circumstances happened. The, the, the product didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. Um, and uh, my partner said, you know what? Let's just leave. Let's just leave. We'll come back next week. We'll take care of it. You got a party to get to. I remember standing on the truck and I said, we're not going anywhere until this job gets done the right way. And he said, you serious? I'm like, we're, we're sticking to it, man. And I, I remember calling my wife and I told her, hey, listen, I've got to be here a few more days when I'm not going to make it to the party. Uh, so, uh, you know, tell Sebastian I love him. I just, I, I got to stay here and work. And I remember that was a sacrifice. And uh, my partner just mentioned that conversation a week ago uh, about, you know, how, how we sacrifice so much. And he just said, even birthday parties, that's all he said. I knew what he was talking about, right? You might yeah, think totally. it's not a big deal, right? A birthday party. But, you know, when, when, when you, at that point, he's your only child. He was my only child at that point. And, you know, his birthday party and his dad's not being there. And, I mean, I, I guess it was hard. But at the moment, I, I look back on it now and I'm like, you know, if I had a chance to do it again, I would. I would, I would, uh, I would do it again. I would stay and work because now uh, Sebastian has an incredible opportunity to learn from a, from a guy at home who, you know, just teaches the principles of hard work. And I teach them all the time. I talk to them all the time about what, what it takes to, to, to be successful. And that's sacrifice, you know? Well, I've seen it, especially in his baseball. I know he loves baseball so much and you see him practicing and practicing and practicing. But you know, if you want to go pro, if you want to, you want to make the big leagues, if you want to be the best of the best, you got, you got to put in the, the, the effort. And you, you saw that with Sebastian. I mean, their, their team uh, won. First of all, how old is Sebastian again? He'll be 12 in November, so he's 11 years old. 12 in November. So, you know, dad's teaching them hard work, right? Yeah. And they ended up going on to win state championship, right? State champ. Best freaking team in the entire state of Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. I mean, he's showing me all these rings that he's wearing. I'm like, whoa, settle down, <laughs> Pontiac. <okay?" laughs> they got, you know, they give these kids World Series rings now. I mean, they're huge. They're no. huge, man. Huge, they're huge rings. But his hands are like weighing down from these rings. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I tell Sebastian, and, and I'll tell anybody that's listening right now, you got to do the things most people aren't willing to do to be successful. Yeah. That's the so key. And I, tell, and I tell Sebastian, are most kids getting up at 6, 30, 7 a.m. and hitting bat- batting practice before they hit their studies? And he's like, no. So that's what you got to do, son. And, you know, he, he puts his iPad, you know, he puts an alarm on his iPad. He gets up every morning. You know, sometimes I'm asleep and all I hear is ding, ding, wow. ding. He's out there in that driveway hitting, hitting, uh, hitting baseballs off his tee, you know, hitting his batting practice. You know, he wakes up on his own. He does things most kids aren't doing, you know. And you got to separate yourself, I tell him. You got to separate yourself from everybody else as far as work ethic. Are, are other kids going to, you know, after their, their batting practice, are they going to go and do a two-hour workout on their body, do, you know, cardio? And he's like, well, probably not. Well, that's what it's going to take for you to be successful. And, totally, and, totally. And I, and I tell any entrepreneur, you know, you got you to separate yourself from everybody else. You know, we always try to, you know, tread water with everybody. I start, you know, many, 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 many times I, I can say that I felt like I was swimming uphill going a hundred percent, you know, but never felt like I was going anywhere, always mm-hmm. swimming uphill, you know, but after a while you continue to swim and you continue to swim and you continue to swim and you're going to see yourself pull away slowly, but surely. And you do the things most people aren't willing to do and you're going to separate yourself from everybody else. So you're going to find success here in your corner. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I think honestly, like focus, you know, um, discipline 
And yep. I, I posted on Facebook today, you know, consistency over intensity, right? You get somebody Absolutely. that shows up at the gym for one day and they just go, ah, you know, for two hours and then yep, they don't do yep. for three months. It's not going to do anything, right? But if you're consistent and then eventually that consistency becomes habit, it becomes part of your discipline. It becomes part of your operating system. Sebastian's turning into an animal now. It's amazing. hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. You got to so, agree with that. Cool. Okay. So let's go to, um, ah, this is, this is a good question, bro. Uh-oh. So how has your marriage been able to make it through? Cause you and I both got married at 19. Well, I was 19. Amy was 18. When you got married, you wrote Rosa was how old? 18. Rosa was 18 and you were how old? 18. 18. Right. We're, and we had been kids. dating. Yeah. We kids. were, we were kids, kids. We were, I was 16 when, when I met Rose. we started dating we're two months uh, apart and she was uh, 17. I was 16 when we started dating. So we've been together for some time now. I just dated myself. Right. And, uh, yeah. but you know, the one thing that we did find was difficulty at the beginning. We did. Um, and now it was so it's hard. Not, it, it's not happily ever after, is it? No. Well, it will be. <laughs> happily, it, will be. Happily, it will be because we, we found one thing that just brought us together and that was God. You know, uh, we, we came together, we had Sebastian and, and we were always having, you know, the, the, the normal couple problems and we had the difficult issues and, you know, uh, and that's for another podcast, right? <laughs> we can get right. into that. Real but, talk. Yeah. Re- yeah. But Real talk. We, f- we found God and, 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 and brought us together and we, and we understood what our role was. I think that's, that's super important in a relationship, even in business, understanding what your role is. You know, Rosa understands what her role is. I understand what my role is uh, in God's eyes. You know, what, what is expected of me uh, primarily uh, to be a, a God-fearing father, God-fearing man, and a God-fearing entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And Rosa understands that and supports that 100%. And she stands in the gap where I can't. And she supports and just continues to, to encourage me. Uh, and, and one of the things that's funny, and we joke about this all the time, if you ask my wife, Rosa, what do I do for a living? And she'll shrug her shoulders. She's like, construction? You know, because, you know, she, she doesn't need to know the fine details of, you know, how many uh, projects I get done today or how many lots we spin or how many erosion control measures we put in. But she does know that she needs to be there for me when I, when, when I need the support. And she's always there for that. She's always there just supporting me hundred percent, supporting me with the children, supporting me with being uh, uh, a good, good man. And, and I, I, I got to give all the credit to Rosa. She's been really just my support throughout this whole time, you know, when Rosa. we had nothing and, and when we had nothing and had no money and, you know, we uh, didn't have grocery money when we only had 20, 30 bucks. I remember, uh, you know, many, many times when we first got started in Sonoran here that, you know, we didn't have grocery money, you know, and, and I would go to, you know, friends' houses and say, Hey, listen, you know, for 10, 20 bucks, can I mow your lawn? You know, and I've, and then he was like, sure. I'd come home super excited. Hey, Rose, I brought 20 bucks home. Let's go to the grocery store right now. Like wow. we got, we got 20, let's go. And I, and, but you know, she was always really supportive of that wow. in, in, in that area. She never said, Hey, you're not bringing enough home. She always said, you're doing your very best, your work, and you're, you're, I believe in you. And she always, till the day, continues to support me. And I, I thank God for her. Oh, that's amazing, man. I, I know you guys were sharing a, a story with me earlier this year when I was at your place. And you guys were talking about uh, the time when you were living in the home that was also like the storage yard for Sonoran. Actually, it's still the storage yard for, for yeah. one of your storage yards. And um, Rosa was saying that actually, Jeremy, when you met Melvin that year, uh, in, in San Jose, California, we were living in that house and yeah. we, had, we had roaches in the house. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they would come and spray and everything, but they would always come back. Like, cause uh, the sewer dream. roaches, sewer roaches, sewer roaches. Like this woman is not a gold <laughs> digger, dude. Like, yeah. yeah it was everything with you. I don't even think Amy could have put up with that, man. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. It was, it was roach. It was, it was infested in roaches and we tried so much to, to get rid of them. It was, it, the house is about 60 years old and uh, you know, there's got those windows where you have to roll out the window, you know, yeah, with the yeah, knob, yeah. you have to roll out the knob, right? Uh, the window. And it's a very, very old small house, but we're so thankful. So, so grateful to be able to live in a, in our first home after just going through so much. And that was our first place. That, that was my, 
my I'm getting back in the game. You know, I, that was my first place getting back in the game. I said, this is this is where we're gonna start, but it's not where we're gonna end. And we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put that up on the screen actually, because I've got I got a I got a couple shots when Melvin and I drove by there earlier this year. So we'll put that up on the screen so you oh, guys cool. can yeah 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 so you guys can check that out and and then we'll also show. Uh, where, where Melvin and his family live now, which is just an absolutely beautiful spot. You've got, uh, how, how big is that lot, Melvin? It's an acre. It's an acre lot. He's got the, you know, the triple garage and, you know, a, beautiful it's a, bungalow. It's a custom home, but it was, it's everything that I've um, ever uh, dreamed of, you know, in, in, in a home. Uh, in retrospect now, I wish I had a little bit more closet space. <laughs> more closet <laughs> space. Guy, How many freaking pairs of shoes do you have now? Oh, geez. I don't know, man. I, there's a few in there. You're hilarious because you, you, you <laughs> you've actually got to send me a photo so I can put it up on the screen. But you, okay. you guys send me a photo because Melvin, you, you guys will see here in a minute because we'll, we'll, we'll throw it up for you guys so you guys can see it. But he's really OCD about putting his shoes back in the box, keeping yeah. that nice new smell. And he's got these these shoes all stacked up in his closet. So we'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. It's hilarious. <laughs> all right. I, I, I always joke with Melvin. I say, man, you're so high maintenance. You're so I, high maintenance. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, in, 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 a, in a deeper sense, I, I, you know, I never did have really nice things growing up and not, not to the fault of my parents. They've always worked hard. There's always done everything they could to, to give us the very best. But, um, you know, I, I love to, to being able to, uh, you know, buy myself some, some good apparel, some nice stuff. You know, I love to uh, do that right now and because I can. And, and uh, it's, it's all just because of the hard work and ethic and, and God that's always been, you know, uh, faithful to me and, and Rosa and the company. So I just thank God and, and, uh, and yeah, man, happy you, right now. And you appreciate it more. You take care of stuff when, Absolutely. when you have to work so hard for it, when it's not just given to you, you know, when it's you know, I, handed yeah, over. I, I walk into the store and people tell me, how do you keep your shoes so clean? I'm like, well, you got to clean them before you put them away because yeah. most people don't clean them before they put them on. Yeah. So that's the trick right there. That's, that's the secret trick right there. Wow. Clean them when you put them away. And that way, when you put them on, you're ready to go. Cause most people are, are running out the door. They're not going to spend that extra 10, 20 minutes cleaning their shoes. So no. I no. clean them. I clean them when I take them off. <laughs> and what's, what's your favorite brand again for shoes, bro? Oh man, I got so Go many now. Go on. On. Go on. Uh, I got Go a few of those. Galore. It's like a buffet of Kohan in, uh, in his closet. Unbelievable, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool, dude. That's cool. Uh, well, that's great. You know what? I, I know you and I can definitely relate on the, on the uh, whole marriage thing. So this is kind of an obvious question, okay? But what is your why? You obviously get up every morning. And you go and you do this and you make this happen. And now you're, now you're pushing for a whole new level. But what is the reason why you're doing this, Melvin? What, what, what is the reason why you haven't quit? You know, Jeremy, um, I don't want to sound cliche in, 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 in all this, but, you know, my family has a lot to do with it. You mm -hmm. know, my family has a lot to do with it. I'm the first uh, business owner in my family. Um, I'm the first uh, successful story in my family. Uh, but I think the legacy I leave behind is what's more important to me than anything right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I always imagine myself, you know, in, in, in a coffin, right? When, when, I, when I'm gone and I'm, and I'm dead and, and, and people are up there at the eulogy and, and they're speaking about me, and I, don't want, I don't want them to say, well, he, he had like 30 pairs of Kohan. You know, that's not what I want to be known for. I don't want to be known for, you know, he uh, – he traveled a lot or he did, you know, everything for himself, but I want to be known for what I did for other people. Mm. Uh, you know, the service I gave to other people, uh, you know, the ability to help other people, the ability to, to just be compassionate, but not only that, but guide and, and teach and, and, and be there for somebody. That's what I want to be known for. That's my reason why I love to teach. I love to inspire. I love to, you know, uh, speak to people and most people won't listen, but there's always going to be those few that will. And that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me striving to learn more because the more I can have, the more I can pour out to others. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my reason why, you know, outside of, you know, my immediate, my kids, my wife, my family, but I love to, I love to just be uh, a person that can just, 
inspire others, you know, and, and I hope it, my story inspires other people, but I want people to say when I die that he was a good man. He, he'd give you the shirt off his back. He, he was always willing to do uh, anything you, you, you needed for him to do. And, and that's what I want to be known for. That's my reason why. That's why I continue to strive to learn that why that's why, that's why I get up every morning. That's why I, I continue to strive. That's why I continue to grow. And, and, and being now with a, a group of people in my team in this company, you know, one of the things that I continue to do is pour into them, pour into them. And, and, you know, I'll get employees that, that worked in the in- industry for many years and come up to me and be like, I've never had anybody say that to me, you know, in, in the construction industry, you know, I don't teach people the, the tangible things they need to learn that eventually they'll learn on the field. I teach them the intangible things, the things that's going to make them successful in the long term. And I tell people, Hey, listen, if you come here for a season and you move on, I want you to leave this company a better person. I don't want you to, you know, uh, to leave and, and not learn anything. I want you to go on and, and better your family, do the things you need to do for your family and to better yourself. And if I have anything to do with that, it would be my privilege to help you and, and do anything you need me to do to help you continue to move forward. So that's my why. And uh, I guess. <laughs> that's amazing, man. I love yeah. it. I love it. So what is your, what is your most memorable moment on this journey as an entrepreneur so far? Wow. Memorable. I'd have to say, um, one of my mentors and I want to give a shout out to him. See if he ever sees this, Mr. Joe Courtney. And I know, you know, uh, Mr. Joe Courtney, but yeah, Yeah. Mr. Joe Courtney, uh, big fella. He, uh, he was, uh, he was the, uh, let's just say the undercard when it comes to his entrepreneur his story is amazing. You can pick up his book. Um, he, he started off, uh, what is, what is, sorry, what is his book called again, Melvin? Oh, the, the book, I got it around here somewhere. Okay. Where's it at here? I'll show you the cover. It's right yeah, here if you, yeah. If you can do that and we'll, then we'll, we'll, we'll post it up there. Yeah. We'll put it up on the screen for you guys. It's okay. Life above and beyond the rim. All right. Yeah. Cause he, he used to be in the NBA. Yeah. He started yeah. playing basketball in 10th grade in the, in, in high school. Make a long story short, he, he uh, plays on the Tree Peak Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's an incredible story. And then he plays here in Phoenix with Charles Barkley and continues to, to a Jeez. long career in the NBA. And I remember, you know, talking to him one day, and, you know, and, and we were at an event where it took my last penny to get there. I took actually my, my rent to pay for the flight to get to this event. It was a leadership event on business and we get there and, and, and I, I, I'm talking to him. I'm telling him how much I need this to happen. Mm-hmm. And I start to cry and I said, Joe, you don't know how much I need this to happen. Like I need, I need this to happen. And I start crying and he said, Melvin, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can in my power to make this happen for you. And from then we started, you know, every day, 5 a.m. leadership calls me and him. He's holding me accountable. And my most memorable thing and all of this is the beginning. When I, when I, when I, when I talked to Joe and I said, I need this to happen. Like, I don't have any money right now. I have no money. I am broke right now. Wow. I have nothing, nothing left in me as far as cash or energy or substance. I am like running thin right now. And he is the big, he is one of the biggest uh, attributors to my success is his leadership and guidance and in, in getting started. So we can talk about all the good stuff, all the nice, great stuff, my, the car, the, the Mercedes, the, the Range Rover, the, the first big check, the first big bonus, the first big contract. But I believe there's, there's going to be a lot of those. Yep. There's going to be a lot of checks coming in. There's going to be a lot of successes. But the one thing that I still remember the most is my beginning. When I said, I need this to happen, I need this to happen right away. Wow. And, uh, you know, my partner, another person who I'll never forget is, is Travis such a supporter in, 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 in this, always willing to let me learn, always allowing me and giving me a track to run. And I thank him for that. So. That's awesome, man. That's amazing. You know what? And, and I, and I really don't think that, that, that we give enough credit to uh, mentors, you know, and people yeah. that accountability is huge. You definitely, uh, I know in my life, I've tried to run it on my own and you just can't do it. You cannot run the track by yourself. Right. And, and no. you look at any great athlete, anybody who's reached, you know, the pinnacle of their success an Olympian who's standing on the podium with their, you know, with their gold medal around their neck, 
you know, yes, they're an incredible human being, right? Committed, disciplined, but there's a team of professionals around that individual that is, that has pushed them to that level. Right. And right. so uh, that's all. So, I'm really so, glad so, glad so, so check this out, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. So Joe tells me this, he said, you know, playing with Michael, he said, he took me under to, underneath his wing. He mentored me. I was his best friend. He mentored me, Melvin. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm getting the same principles directly from the man who was mentored by Michael. <laughs> I'm third generation, Michael. That's next level, bro. That's <laughs> next, next level. level, right? I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's such a – what an opportunity do I have to learn from a guy who was mentored from yeah. the greatest who've ever played the game, yeah. right? Yeah, totally. And you get those ingredients, but it's what you do with those ingredients. Do you apply it to your life? Do you, do you, do you make it part of your operating system? Right. Absolutely. absolutely. And if you don't, then you're just, you know, it's just, it's in, it's out. Right. Absolutely. You no. Know? So that's, that's awesome, man. Uh, what has contributed the most to having a successful partnership in business? Because excuse me, we know in business, most business partnerships fail period. I don't know what the stat is on it, but it's high. It's very high. Most business partnerships don't work period. So What's, what's the one thing that you can say that has really made having a business partner successful? Wow. That's a great question. Um, our relationship is very unique. The relationship I have with, with Travis, my partner, very unique. Um, I want to say a lot has to do with God in my life. I want to say that, that being able to understand um, each other is a lot to do with it. And we met in 2006, me and Travis. Uh, since 2006, we've never had an argument. Never had a, wow. a, a disagreement in a way that I would say most business partners have in many, in many situations. Mm -hmm. We've always allowed each other. Uh, we've always honored each other. We've always given each other an opportunity to speak. We've always given each other an opportunity to encourage each other. But I think what the that combination between me and him and what makes it work is that we both compromise with each other. Mm. And that's huge. And that's huge. We both compromise with each other. He'll give and I give, you know, I take and he takes and, and, it, and it works. We compromise with each other when, when times needs to compromise and I tell him something and he said, okay. And he, he'll let me know something. I said, okay, you know, you want to do it, do it, you know, and we've always compromised very well. Knowing each other uh, is one of, I, I'd say one of my biggest blessings in life, knowing that gentleman, that office just is right across the hall from me is, is a gentleman that I get, I'd say is God sent, you know, and it's, it's been a long road and, you know, he's had to put up with me <laughs> for many years, but I got to say he's been one of my biggest blessings as well. That's amazing, man. Would you say that communication is really important as well? So I know you, you know, there's been, there's been times in, 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 in your relationship and I know it stands for us in our marriage for sure that you got to have those tough questions. You got to have those tough conversations, right? But communication, man, I mean, if, if you're not talking about it, then it's just building up inside. Right. And that's one of the things that, I mean, personally, I've had the hardest time with was being able to communicate what I felt in, in business. Um, but you know, getting better with myself, understanding that, uh, that things need to be said in many times. Um, and always assuming that I knew what he was going to say uh, was probably my, the one factor that hurt uh, or was a hindrance to me mm. when I really didn't know what he was going to say in partnership. So when I finally work up and I heard to say something, he would, okay. I'm like, wow, I sweated that one for a week. And, and that was that simple. He's like, yeah, if you, if you, if you're that strong about it, you feel that strong about it. Yeah do it or let's make it happen or, or what do I need to do for, for you to be happy? Or what do I need to do to make you uh, happy? And, and it was like, wow, that was, that was actually pretty easy. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than that, but I mean, he's, he's always been a, a, a person who a level headed uh, uses, you know, uh, integrity to the fullest. And that's, I think one of the things that we birth both are, are very, um, we jive, you know, we we're, we're good with each other in that way, the integrity, the, 
the respect we've nah. always respect. I still call. I was him waiting for you to say that word because I'm yeah. <laughs> so clear that you know there's there's not one way respect, right? Because one way respect yeah. doesn't work, but you guys yeah. mutually respect one another. So, and and, and you both understand that you guys have very different roles in the company as well. Absolutely, understanding our role is huge in yeah. the company in the yeah. in the company success. You know, I started as 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 a laborer, and I understand equipment. I understand field. I understand building and he's more on the understanding of legal documentation understands business as far as insurance and policies and and we mm. both office out of this place now but at one time when we were both deciding a factor I was i was like okay you need to you need to get in the office because our billings are getting backed up now and you being out here with me you're only a hindrance now because you're not good of, you're not that good of a labor yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> i yeah, need yeah. to hire a better labor than you uh travis so you need to go to the office Take care of what we need to take care of in the office. I've got the field. Understanding our roles, and you said it right now, like like I said earlier, respect. I mean, we'll come in here every morning, and he'll call me, or he'll he'll address me by Mr. Astorga or, or Sir, how you doing, sir, this morning? And I'm the same way with him. Sir, how you doing? You know, That's awesome. Man. It's always a a, a, a a strong, strong uh, respect factor between me and him. Always really respectful. Oh, that's amazing. Well, in closing, Melvin, um, so somebody, somebody watching this who has maybe been an employee all their life, they've got this burning passion to become an entrepreneur or somebody just starting out as an entrepreneur, what would be your advice to them uh, getting started in business completely green, brand new as an entrepreneur? What would, what would be the one thing that you would say to them? Wow. You know, there's so many – so many answers. There's so many people that can give so many different advice or, uh, based on that question. And you, you can go to Google and they can, they can tell you to, you know, first thing you need to do is step number one, set up a business, step an LLC or, 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 you know, of course, find a mentor or so many things you can, you know, it's a, such a loaded question. What, what is the first thing an entrepreneur needs to do to become successful? And I'm going to circle back to that again is work. Mm. That's it. At the end of the day, you can have all the tools you need to succeed. But if you don't put the work in, it's not going to work. You know why it's called work? Because it works. <laughs> That's, awesome, man. That's it. It, it works. works. You work hard. You find the people that, 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 that uh, will be coming your way. You find them. You shoot them with respect. Doors were open. When one door opens, you walk through it. When one door's closed, the other door opens. You're going to find your way through. All you got to do is put the work in, work hard, find someone that can, uh, you can learn from. Absolutely. Find your mentorships. I, I, we, again, we circle back to the mentorship. I couldn't have done it without my mentorship. Wow. But, you know, all the mentorship in the world doesn't work unless you do. Totally. Right? Yeah. So put totally. the work in guys, you know, don't think about, you know, you need to have everything in line for it to, to happen. It's going to happen. If you happen, if you put the work in, you make it happen. It's going to happen. Everything will fall in place. If you're ready to put your head down and work. You know what, Melvin, this is, this has been amazing. I, I remember having tr uh, dinner with uh, uh, now president Trump uh, many, many years ago when I was over in Barcelona, Spain for a, a corporate event and, uh, you know, his advice, like they said, hey, if there's one thing that you can share with us tonight in closing, you know, share with us as, you know, business owners. Yeah. What advice would you give us? And it was so simple, but he said, don't quit. Don't ever, ever, ever quit. Don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. And you know what? That rings in my mind over yeah. and over again. And I think about him today and all the crazy stuff that goes on daily, you know, uh, obviously with him being president, I think, man, like, I would want to quit, right? Yeah. Like, enough is enough, but I know it's not in his blood to quit. Yeah. And so for me, that was one of the things that, that was a huge takeaway for me because when I started my last company and I lost it, you know, it was tough for me, Melvin, because when I started that company and I quit a lot of things in my life, man, you know, the pressure, you know, it would get tough and I'd be like, okay, yeah. I'm out. But that was one thing in my life where I'm like, man, I just, I'm never going to quit. You know, I'm never, ever going to quit. And so whether you're, and sometimes in, you know, in life we get, we get trapped with this whole mentality of, well, if that doesn't work out, I guess that I'm a quitter, I'm a failure or whatever, but no, it's just don't quit period. Yeah. Just get back up. Yeah. Just 
you got a bad game, you lose the game, okay, who cares? You go back to the basics like Sebastian, he's out there, bing, bing, you know, he's hitting the balls, practice, practice, practice. And so that's my biggest thing right now is that no matter what I do in life, I ain't going to quit. I ain't going to quit on my wife. I ain't going to quit on my kids. I ain't going to quit on my friends. I just not yeah. going to quit. I'm going to fight. I'm a warrior. I'm a king. I'm going to fight. I love that. I love that, Jeremy. Well put. So I know I'm trying to figure out like where I'm going to get that tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it so much. It's just, it's so in, and you know what I've been through the last couple of years. So yeah. to be in this place right now where I feel, you know, inspired enough to, to do this no bull biz thing, you know, yeah. and, and, and for me, it was like, you know, one of the things that you said, you don't have to wait till the time is perfect. So many people are saying, Jerry, you got such a crazy story man, you got to just, you got to get this no bull biz thing going, you know, cause you know, so many people, you know, so many business people yep. and you've got so many hours of being in the trenches of, of being an entrepreneur. And so yep. I know right now that somebody's going to watch this video today and they're going to hear your story and something's going to click, you know, something's yep. going to click for them because there's always that, there's always that button, you know, there's always yep. that hot button. There's always that takeaway, that, that aha uh -huh moment. And everybody sees the lights come on at different times in their life. And I just, I really want to throw it back to you, man. I really want to thank you for taking the time. Cause I know you're busy. I know you guys have got a lot of stuff going on with projects and business right now, yeah. but I really want to thank you for taking the time to invest, uh, in yeah. this particular project. And uh, actually Melvin and I are going to do kind of a part two, uh, to this. Cause I don't want to just like tell my story. My story to me seems so, so old now, but Melvin's going to come and, and he's going he's gonna to connect with us uh, for a part two, a follow-up to this. And he's going to ask me a bunch of tough questions. So that'll be yeah. fun. That'll yeah. be get, fun. get ready. Take it easy, okay? Take it yeah, easy. Well, I know, no, I, that's, that's not in my nature to take it easy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm freaking out. No. <laughs> well, thanks again, man. I love you. And uh, like I said, I, I wish we were in Phoenix doing this side by yeah. side. I know that we'll, we'll do some stuff over the winter months. Yep. But, uh, man, it's been great having you here, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Okay, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Peace out. Guys, look who I ran into. Introduce yourself. Melvin Astorga, Phoenix, Arizona. How you doing, everybody? Contractor. Going to do $5 million this year. Yes, sir. Just bought himself a Range Rover down there. We ran into each other down here. Uh, you guys come out and see me. Yep. Well, guys, that was an awesome feature uh, with Melvin Astorga. I want to thank Melvin again for taking the time to, uh, to do that. I know he's extremely busy. And we really appreciate him investing into our community here. And uh, just such an awesome, humble, really hardworking uh, success story in business. So Melvin, love you, man. Miss you. Can't wait to get down there and spend some time with you this winter. So you know what, guys? Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to throw another little, uh, little promotion, kick this off. If you comment, you got to like this video and you got to comment below swag, okay? You gotta comment below swag. And so if you do that, your name's gonna go into a draw that we're gonna draw at the end of September for a no bull biz swag package. You guys are gonna like it. It's gonna be super cool. And so make sure you like this video, go and subscribe to our channel and uh, comment below swag, okay? Comment below swag and uh, we will put your name into the draw for the No Bull Biz swag package. It's going to be cool. You're going to love it and uh, can't wait to, uh, to give it to you. So without further ado, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off here, but we will see you again next Friday for our founder feature right here on No Bull Biz TV. Until then, stay focused, do the work and show up every day and put 100% into what you're doing. All right. Have a successful, have a successful day. Ah, I screwed it up. Frig. Ah, okay, let's do this again. All right, guys, so until next time, I will see you again next Friday for our founder feature right here on No Bull Biz TV. Until then, stay focused, stay disciplined, take massive action, and have tons of success. Cheers. Ah!